Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are talking about impractical furniture and decor items. I've done this a couple of times on my channel. You all really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It's always fun to point out those, you know, those little trendy things that you see on Instagram or on, you know, maybe right here on YouTube or on Pinterest or whatever. These items that look beautiful, they look like they're gonna make sense, but then when you really stop and think about it, you just kind of wonder, are they actually practical for real life? And so I'm not saying these items are bad. I'm not saying they're not gonna work for you. I'm saying, let's just have a little bit of a word of caution on some of these items, because maybe they might not be as practical as you might think they would be based on, you know, a beautifully filtered, you know, Instagram post or whatever. So let's get to those impractical, albeit beautiful, home decor and furniture items. Okay, but you know what is always practical? Beautiful, amazing sheets and towels from today's sponsor, Brooklinen. If you aren't familiar, Brooklinen sells beautiful, luxurious bedroom and bathroom essentials, all completely online so that you can shop for all these things from the comfort of your own home. Also, they've been kind enough to give my viewers $20 off Brooklyn and products on any order over $100 by using code Nick. The link is in the description. To me, things like towels and sheets are an everyday luxury that are just always worth investing in. You know you're going to use these products every day, so I think it's such a practical item that you should really consider treating yourself to. You all know that I love home decor trends. I love to get inspiration and new ideas from different trends and new things that are happening, but the products that I think are often really worth splurging on are those everyday items that you just know that you're going to use. I personally have the super plush move-in towel bundle, which includes all the essentials that I need. It gives you four bath towels, four hand towels, four washcloths, and a plush bath mat, and I personally have it in the color graphite. And they're more affordable than ever with $20 off our Brooklyn and products on all orders over $100 by using code Nick and by clicking on the link in the description. Now let's get back to some of those impractical items. Okay, so the first impractical home decor furniture item is going to be vessel sinks and pedestal sinks. So they are different, but we're going to give you a little bit of a two for one here. Okay, so let's talk about those. So there is the vessel sinks are the sinks that are these beautiful bowls. They look gorgeous, sure, and they sit on your bathroom vanity and they look really great. I get it. There are some really gorgeous ones on Instagram. I've seen these beautiful ones. I've even looked at them and thought, oh, those would be gorgeous in my house. So first of all, let's talk about these vessel sinks and how annoying they are to clean, right? Especially looking at that little tiny crack that gives, gives me so much anxiety thinking about this stupid little spot on your countertop, right? Which is right when that vessel sink connects with your kitchen countertop. That just looks like it's going to be so annoying to clean and it just is going to get all this toothpaste and grime and what I mean, maybe not your toothpaste, maybe, I don't know, does your toothpaste ever really get outside the bowl? I don't know. But let's say you have kids or something and they get their grimy little hands under there. That is going to be so annoying to have to clean. I would personally say that going for an undermount sink is going to be so much more practical because under that bowl is just really, really irritating to clean, really, really annoying. Also, I wouldn't recommend putting them in a primary bathroom. They are even more annoying if you're going to use them to say wash your face or do any of like the practical things that you would do in a primary bathroom. So maybe in a powder room, maybe even then I find these to be incredibly hard to clean. I wouldn't even recommend them. So I actually find these things to be quite impractical for daily use, albeit they do look quite nice on Instagram and Pinterest, I will give you that. But now let's talk about the pedestal sinks that I am seeing everywhere. These are the full column pedestal sinks that have no room for storage usually, which first of all is a problem. Although, you know, you can find other places to store your towels and whatever, your hand towels and whatever in the bathroom. That in and of itself, you know, it's a missed storage opportunity, but I'll give you that one. What's really annoying though, is these gorgeous photos never have any space to put your soap. So where does your hand soap go? Have we learned nothing from the pandemic? People should be washing their hands a lot more frequently than apparently they are in these photos. There is no really good spot to be able to put your soap when you have these gorgeous bowls that have no room for any other space for a vanity to actually put a soap pump. Nor do they have any space on the walls because they, of course they wouldn't put that on the wall because that would screw up the photo. So they never have an adequate place to be able to put your soap pump to actually be able to wash your hands effectively using the bathroom, which you should be doing as discussed. Did you not live through the last two years? Why aren't you washing your hands as frequently as you should be? I will give a pass to these column beautiful sinks that maybe have a little bit of a ledge. I've seen that work. That can be fine. Just a little bit of a spot just to think these things through because so often these things look great in photographs, but they just don't really make sense for real life. In real life, you're washing your hands. In photographs, apparently you don't have to. So there's no real adequate space to be able to put, you know, your hygiene products that you're going to need on a daily basis. 
this. So really think through how you're practically going to be using your bathroom before you just take a look at these gorgeous photos on Pinterest and go, yep, sounds good, you know, put that in my bathroom. I would just really think twice about these things. Okay, next up on my list is going to be open shower doors. So shower doors are always a, an interesting one. There's some different ones that are just less practical than others. For example, ones where the gap sort of overhangs, you know what I'm talking about? Where the gaps overlap, that can be really difficult to clean in between. But the one that is really in my sights right now are these super open shower doors where there's just no glass, no curtain for like half the shower. And this actually made my list because I stayed at a B&B, a beautiful, amazing, like Japanese Zen style B&B right here in British Columbia. Loved it, it was beautiful. But then I saw the shower and I was like, where's the other half? These are becoming increasingly popular in, in contemporary spaces. And I think they're a mistake or maybe not a mistake. I'm not gonna say they're a mistake, they're beautiful. But, and I get why people are doing them because they're going for these sort of minimalist spaces and think, you know, what's more minimal than not having half a shower? But they might be impractical. And let's talk about two reasons. One is really obvious, splashing. When you're in these things, it is impossible to keep the rest of the bathroom free of water because you know those tiny little lips that are like, I don't know, a half an inch tall? That's not enough to keep out the water. I don't know what everybody else is doing in the shower. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm alone on this, but I just feel like that's not enough to be able to stop all the water from gushing into the rest of the bathroom. So to me, that is a really obvious problem with these types of showers, but they be becoming increasingly popular, which I think is a little bit of a mistake. The second reason, which is maybe less obvious until you've used one, is temperature. It's freezing in that bathroom when half the glass is missing. I don't know if I need to go into a whole lot of detail of the practicalities of that, but I would just just say when you're in the shower and you have no glass or no curtain or anything to sort of trap in the heat that you have in a shower, it just opens yourself up to the draftiness that can be in the rest of the bathroom. Now, if it's a larger bathroom, this becomes increasingly more impractical, especially in these gorgeous, huge luxury bathrooms where you've got half the glass missing. That just sounds like a recipe to freeze your little bum off while you're in there trying to shower and get ready for the day. So to me, those are impractical for those two reasons. Beautiful, minimal, maybe not right for you. Okay, next up, let's talk about curved sofas. Oh, this one hurts because I love a curved sofa. I admit they're beautiful. I've recommended some curved sofas on this very channel. And I'm not saying they're a bad pick. That's not what we're really talking about in this video. We're talking about just like, you know, let's do a little second guess on how practical these are in your home. So let's talk about some of the trade-offs that you make with a curved sofa. So curved sofas are beautiful and they're really great for circulation. I think as a general rule, Circles are often better at circulating around when you're space planning than squares or rectangles are, right? Sometimes if you're say in like a larger open space, but you wanna have something that is easy to circulate around, curves can be really, really great. But they can sometimes be impractical because by having a curve, you're going to have less room for seating than if you were to have the same footprint, but in something like a plain sort of rectangle or even a sectional couch, which is probably going to be a lot more more efficient at being able to hold a lot more people than something like a curved. For you to comfortably sit in a curved, you're probably going to have a lot less seating than you would in that same footprint if you were to have something like a rectangular couch or a full sectional. So specifically, when you're looking at a curved couch, I think a lot of these photos, they're showing off these beautiful curved couches in very large spaces. And the reason for that is because there's lots of room to circulate around them. And usually there's enough seating that it doesn't necessarily matter that you're probably going to not have as much seating on this couch as you maybe would have had you had like a full sectional. But if you were to say in a be a space like mine right here, uh, where you are kind of forced to put your couch up against the wall, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, by the way, it can be a great efficient use of space. But when you are putting your couch up against the wall, by having a curved couch, you would be sort of sacrificing a lot of that really, really precious real estate to actually devote to seating. And I think that's where they become quite impractical. If you have a smaller space or you have in a small apartment or something like that, a curved sofa can be a problem and can be a waste of space compared to just going with a square couch. If you have a larger space or if there's enough room around the curved sofa so that it's really amazing for circulation and you don't mind losing a, a seat here and there, then I would consider a curved sofa, but just be really careful of the practicalities, especially if you're in a smaller room. Okay, next up, we've got beautiful fabrics that aren't kid or pet friendly. Okay. 
I think there are a lot of really amazing fabrics out there that are beautiful, that are gorgeous, that are also going to be very practical for pets or kids. For example, leather couches can be really great when you have pets, right? Like a lot of times they're usually quite durable and especially a high quality leather couch can like have a little bit of a patina that's going to maybe happen uh, just with the realities of having a pet that maybe jumps on the couch or a cat or whatever that may make sense for you. There's also a lot of performance fabrics that be really great for kids that are elegant, that are gorgeous, but are going to be a little bit more resistant to spills and stains than some of the other fabrics that are out there because there are some fabrics that just don't really make sense for kids and pets. And I just think that they're really trendy and really popular looking at you, Boucle, but might not necessarily make sense for people that, you know, don't just have adults living in the home with no pets, right? That is just the reality for a lot of people. I'm also going to give a shout out to someone who left a comment on a previous video of mine, Julie. She had a really amazing idea. I'm so mad I didn't think of it, which is when you are going to get your couch, consider ordering the little samples, like the little swatches that they'll send you. You know, lots of places will do it. Brick and mortar places will do it. Even the online places like Article and Rove Concepts, Sundays, whatever, they'll all send you swatches. Literally take the swatches and wipe it on your dog or cat. I mean, how smart is that? That's so, it makes so much sense and it will really save you the time before you spend the thousands of dollars on getting these couches in your home and actually real world testing, whether it's going to work, you know, wipe it on your dog. See if it's going to catch that fabric because that is really going to tell you whether or not it's going to be practical for you in your own home. While you're at it, wipe it on your toddler too. See what happens. I mean, like, you know, these things, some of these fabrics are a lot more durable than others. So really do your homework before you buy the couch and before you bring it into your home to avoid any disappointment. They look great on social media, but might not make sense for you and your lifestyle and your family. Okay, next up, let's talk about arc lamps. I hate arc lamps. Uh, sorry, I do. I don't, they are beautiful. They are very elegant. They got these gorgeous curves, whatever. I shouldn't say I hate them. I personally don't really care for them. And here's why. I have never walked into a room, seen an arc lamp and not hit my head on it. Every single time I forget that they're there and usually people have them gracefully sitting over top of their sectional or their couch, usually where I'm sitting and I always hit my head. I always, I don't know, I'm 6'1", so maybe Maybe that's like a factor. Maybe if you're a little bit shorter, maybe you've never bumped into this, <laughs> literally bumped into this. Uh, but for me, every single time I see those stupid things, I always hit my head. I think they can be beautiful. I think you just really need to be careful of where that shade is actually being placed. Sometimes they are being used as task lights where it's sort of they gracefully go over top of your couch for you to be able to use for, you know, while you're sitting on the couch, reading a book, what have you. And you know me, I love some task lighting. I just sometimes feel like this this particular style lamp is a bit of a hazard because I do think that you're going to forget that it's there and you're going to hit your head. At some point, someone's going to hit their head and it always just drives me nuts. I will also say that over top of a dining table, I get the look. I understand what people are trying to do. Might make sense if you're a renter and you can't do anything about, let's say, doing a pendant over top of the table. But if you have the option, 99% of the time, I will say that a pendant over top of your dining room table is always, pretty much always going to be more practical, more functional than doing an arc lamp over top of a dining room table. And that's really for the main reason that an arc lamp is going to sort of cut off the flow and the function around the dining room table. I also just think, you know, it opens itself up so much more to people hitting their head than you would with a pendant, which is just a perfect solution to that problem because it's right there in the center of the table, up and out of the way. No one can hurt themselves. Everybody's got the lighting that they need. Everybody's happy. It's usually a better choice to go with a pendant than go with something like these arc lights, which usually just get in the way and are a little bit of a hazard in my opinion. They are beautiful. They are classic. Yes, it's a timeless, amazing, gorgeous design. Just not necessarily all that practical in my experience. Okay, that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm going to link here to the playlist of impractical furniture and decor items because I've turned it into a playlist because you guys seem to really like this series and I have a lot of fun with it. So go ahead and check a look at those other two videos where I talked about more impractical but beautiful things that exist on the internet. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.